Welcome to Driving School WA Tutorials. In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate how to turn safely at a major intersection without the green arrow. So I'm talking about the intersection where there's a green light and potentially a green arrow that changes to red or stays red and then at some point the red arrow drops and you've got the single green light where you've got to give way to the opposite direction, okay? Like in, in this in, in this drawing here. In a situation where there's a vehicle in front of you, I'm going to incorporate the uh, the real situations where I'm driving the, in the car, so you have better visuals and understanding how to do this properly and safely. So if there's a vehicle in front of you waiting, and for example, if the green arrow drops and there's a single green light, when this car in front, assuming that you are the car, the white car with the blue stripes on it, when the red car moves in the middle, allowing the traffic from opposite direction to get through, you're not supposed to cross the line and wait here until this vehicle completely clears, okay? So make sure you can fit past before you commit over to pass inside of the intersection and get, get through, okay? So just to recap, so in a situation like I've just showed you, if the red arrow drops and you've got a single green light, so when there's a vehicle in front of you and the red arrow disappears, you must strictly wait behind a solid white line before that vehicle completely clears. Under no circumstances, don't risk getting stranded in the middle of the intersection, in the middle of the path of potentially fast oncoming traffic, okay? That's extremely important, so do not make that error. So, when the vehicle in front of you lines up waiting for the cars coming through from the opposite direction, okay? So they'd be here in the middle, so make sure that when this one commits forward, you've got to make sure they clear the intersection before you cross the line and, you know, providing that there's no one else to give way to from the opposite direction, so you would be able to proceed, okay? Very important to remember. In a different scenario where there's traffic turning okay so if we've got traffic turning from the opposite direction from the turning lane okay and uh, if you're trying to turn where there's seemingly no cars coming straight through from the opposite direction we've got to be careful if this vehicle is obstructing our view so we've got to cautiously move forward and make sure that there's no one coming through in order to proceed safely and turn right. So you've got to understand that. As you can see here in the real footage, in a situation where seemingly we don't have traffic to give way to from the opposite direction, still we don't have a great view because it's obstructed by the cars turning from the opposite direction. So move forward as far as you possibly can without cutting through into the opposite direction path, so from there, okay, and now it's not an option to sit there and wait until the light changes, so that's not an option, so you've got to move forward, some say by a length of a car, but it will depend on the size of the intersection, so if, if it's really lengthy, you know, uh, intersection between those two sides, sometimes you might need to move forward even by two and, you know, sometimes even two and a half lengths, depending on the size of the intersection, like I said, so this painted white square, it's usually white, as you could see in the footage I just showed you a moment ago. So this painted square is sort of a guide where we could get up to. So we can block the opposite direction turning lane, but we can't cut into the, um, uh, you know, straight going lanes, because if someone's coming through and you're standing there, they might collide with you obviously so just just ensure that that's the case and ha ha how you do it all right in a situation where there's a green arrow if most of the traffic gets through and at some point the uh, green arrow changes you would have to wait until it disappears so if the most of the traffic has proceeded and uh, while you were on the way towards the intersection if it changes to the red arrow you would have to wait until the red arrow changes or until it disappears, okay? 
when it does, you've got to understand, you've got to give way to all the traffic going straight, okay, before you can commit, okay? And then once everything is clear, you can then peacefully and safely proceed, okay? So that's very important. So in this real situation here, when we don't manage to catch the green arrow and have to wait, you have to wait until the arrow drops. If you're the first car, after the arrow drops, you can commit forward up to the white painted square, just ensuring that you're not cutting into the opposite direction that's going straight ahead and then proceed when it's safe to do so. So you got to remember that and you got to go through these situations in order to know how to handle them every time you come across them. Often we see licensed drivers who don't understand this particular situation and if they've got a single green light without an arrow they would sit there and wait until the light changes. But the problem is there are lights out there without the arrow at all. Usually you'd see these type of traffic lights without the green arrow or red arrow at all where there's no high volume of traffic. How would you turn then? How would you, you know, you've got to understand that, you know, if you've got a green light, you really just need to give way to people from the opposite direction and then proceed when it's safe to do so. Unfortunately, governments fund modifying intersections because drivers are not capable of understanding and executing some of the simple things that we should all really know. If we have driver's license, we should know how to handle this, okay? And I personally believe if you can't do this safely, you shouldn't get your license. I'm sorry, but that's how I feel about it. I witnessed so many horrible accidents and this is something that can easily be avoided and most of the times it's human error, never a mechanical error. One of the most commonly asked questions is what do you do if the light changes while you're waiting? Okay, so for example, you got in the middle and you're waiting for the traffic to come through, but there's so many cars from the opposite direction coming through all the time. And at some point, light changes to amber and then to the red, okay? So what you would do while you're standing there you would make a judgment and you would assess if the traffic is slowing down or speeding up to get through. When you get some reasonable experience in this situation, it's going to be effortless to understand if the traffic is speeding up and proceeding or slowing down. If you see that they're speeding up to get through, just wait. So even if you go partially through the red light, that's not a problem, okay? Because there is a buffer gap about two to three seconds between the time the light changes that side and that side light changes to amber and red before that side these ones get green light okay so one more thing that you got to understand when your traffic lights that you that you're looking at when they start to change the opposite direction traffic lights change at exactly the same time, okay? There are no exceptions. So you've got to have that understanding. You've got to practice on these intersections a lot with your instructors and your private supervisors, providing that you're at the level where you can respond properly to the verbal instructions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.